Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Time for another Let's Read with Nintendo Power. This time we're going to be looking at volume number 24. If you haven't done so yet, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate all the support. And with that, let's get into it. You'll see here, um, it's been a number of years as well since I've gone through this issue, so I would thought I would just go through it with you guys at the same time, and that way I could be surprised as well. On the cover, uh, the main game for this particular issue is going to be Vice Project Doom. Um, and there's also other features in it, talking about Rocketeer, uh, Gauntlet 2 for the Game Boy, uh, there's a Battletoads comic, comic, and much more. Uh, the cover artwork, obviously uh, some scenes, or some scenes that are, do take place inside Vice Project Doom. Uh, flipping it over, you can see here there's uh, some player guides that you're able to get for Nintendo Power. There's Nintendo Power Source, uh, phone number to call, and player guides uh, telling you what's in specific issue, uh, Game Atlas for Nintendo Player Guide 1, Game Boy for 2, uh, Mario, if you anything basically interested in Mario, you want to get Nintendo Player Guide 3, and Super Nintendo focuses on Player Guide 4. Table of Contents. Uh, this one involves uh, Price Vice Project Doom as the main feature, followed by Rocketeer, Lone Ranger. Uh, we have some Adventures of Lolo. And then we have our tips from the pros involving Howard and Nestor, which is the comic, Counselor's Corner, Classified Info, video updates as to what's now playing, Pack Watch our Game Boy section, Players Forum, and the Info Zone. So we'll delve into this as we go through the issue. The next page is the Player's Pulse. This is where people can write in and, you know, show off parts of their collection, of artwork that they've drawn for their favorite characters. Here we get into the main uh, review of this magazine, which is Vice Project Doom. It's not a game that I've actually played, um, and I don't believe I still own it. Um, so it's definitely a side scroller for the most part, though it does have a top down uh, section where you're driving in a car. So basically, for Vice Project Doom, it's a sci fi adventure from American Sammy. Uh, that's loaded with action, plot twists, and thrills, packed stages. Most of the game takes place in the classic running and jumping side view, though there are some stages that look at the action from a totally different angle, that being, as I mentioned earlier, like the top-down overhead driving scene. And there's also a first-person perspective with 11 alien blasting stages. So, obviously, your pickups, stage one. Uh, stage one looks to be uh, the driving stage, top down. Stage two, stage three, more side action scrollers. Stage four, five, boss action battle, and stage five. Almost looks to be like a cross between like a Contra slash, um, I almost want to say like a Golgol 13 type of action here, especially with this boss battle first person shooter style, which Golgol was uh, known for. And stage six, stage seven. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. Obviously, you can you can freeze the picture if you want and take a look. But definitely a in-depth, uh, detailed, almost full gameplay walkthrough of it. And then well, this is if you want to see what happened. It's almost looked like they left the section for it to be continued if they decided to uh, 
continue on further with the game in the future. The Howard and Nestor section, I'm not a big fan of this, but it's the uh, stupid comic. Obviously, this one's a take on the NES uh, game of Monopoly. Now, The Rocketeer, this was a movie um, I did see in the theater. I really liked it. Um, it's, I love the, the artwork slash uh, very sort of re uh, retro feel since it took place in the 1930s. It's a very uh, reminiscent of a certain timepiece and period. Um, I just love the character as well. I remember... You know, what kid didn't want to go around flying around with the jetpack on his back? Um, I think the game was a rental for me, from what I can remember. Um, but I think it was a one-time rental, so I never really got uh, much gameplay out of it. So you're Cliff Secord, a reluctant hero in the pre-war tension era. Um, Rocketeer is made by Bandai. And they even talked about how it's going to be soaring in action based on the upcoming summer blockbuster from Walt Disney Studios. Um, it is a great movie. That's the last I'll say on that, so check it out. Uh, gameplay. And rating down here at the bottom. It's got an average of 3 out of 5. Standard weapons. It all starts when Cliff Secord... A racer for the Bigelow Air Circus finds a package in the cockpit of an unused plane. Cliff and his pal know that the package is something special indeed, a streamlined double cylinder rocket pack. PV crafts a helmet and Cliff is readying for a test flight when a mob of thugs breaks into the hangar. PV makes a run for it and Cliff takes to the air as the rocketeer. Again, more side action scrolling. I don't remember if there's an actual flying part in the game. I wonder if it's more of just jumping up and down with uh, larger jumps than normal. Though you think there would be a flying section. Yeah, most of the action seems to take place on the ground from what I can tell. I would buy the game just based on the nostalgia. Well, there maybe there's a little flying scene here when you're fighting a boss. Remember, this was the big end scene, I think, at the end of the movie. You were, the bad guy took off in a Zeppelin and you had to fly up there. Nintendo Power Awards. For 19, is that when this came out? 1990? Sorry, I forgot to check at the start. Yep, this issue was May 1991. The votes are in and Nestor, the votes are in and the Nestors are polished and ready for the video game event of the season. And now the envelopes, best graphics and sound. Mega Man 3, followed up by Super Mario Brothers 3 and Castlevania 3, best theme and fun. Winner is Super Mario 3, second place Mega Man 3, and Dragon Warrior. Uh, best challenge, Castlevania 3, definitely. Second place, Crystallis. I didn't find that very challenging, though it's a very good game. And Battle of Olympus, I remember that was a rental. I don't think I liked it that much. Best play control, Mario 3, followed by Mega Man 3 and Super C. That is true, Mario 3. I've always said it's almost the perfect NES game. Uh, definitely my favorite game for the entire system. Um, and again, this was another one of those things where I always looked like in the top 10 or the top 30, and I'd always expect the games that I like to be up near the top, and if they weren't, I'd get pretty upset about it. All right, even more. Best Hero, Mega Man. Second place, Mario. Third place, Donatello. Which one was Donatello? You see the one with the, um, I think he was the swords, right? Best bad guy, Shredder. Oh, who cares? 
I would have put Dr. Wily over a Shredder. Koopalings, that's stupid. Most innovative Shadowgate, definitely. Um, that was a purchase for me, uh, even though I found it super frustrating. Maybe I just wasn't smart enough as a kid to really understand it. But uh, excellent game. What makes it so different? 3D perspective, text clues, tons of items and mysteries around every corner. Yeah, they made that game super tough. Third place Maniac Mansion. I really like that one. Um, that I had played on the PC prior to the NES, and I know I like that. Simultaneous multiplayer game, Ninja Turtles 2. I'd have to agree with that one. Play action football. Yeah, it's a pretty good football game for the NES. Dr. Mario. It's a piece of garbage. Best, overall best games. For the NES, Mario 3, followed by Turtles 2, followed by Mega Man 3. And then for the Game Boy, Fall Foot Clan, Super Mario, and oh, Final Fantasy Legend. That's good. Nice. I always love seeing... Uh, old things like that. Battletoads comic. I guess if you're into Battletoads, I found that one to be a super tough game. Really frustrating. Almost, I don't want to say it's broken, but it's parts of it that are just overly hard. I think for, especially, the, you know, the genre that they were probably targeting. Wow, this is a long comic. Stay tuned for further adventures of Battletoads the next issue. Oh, I can't wait. Another section that I like, the classified information. So this is where um, game players uh, could create an agent code for themselves and then send in tips or tricks or codes for, uh, for certain games. So what's this one? Swordmaster. Can't say I ever played that one. Conquest of the Crystal Palace. It was a rental. Um, I don't think I fully understood it and really liked it as a kid. Mega Man 3 speaks for itself. Password power-ups. Where you can get seven energy tanks. What? Nine energy tanks. Nice. TMNT2. Double strength code. What was that one? Put on two separate codes, allowing nine turtles in reserve in a stage select. Oh, that's nice. We have Captain Skyhawk. That was definitely a rental. That was almost like a, if I remember correctly, like a Zaxxon type of feel to it. Silver Surfer, that game is broken. Maniac Mansion, uh, worth having. Another point and click. Uh game sort of similar to like Shadowgate that we talked about previously except this one you could actually see the characters and have movement Mega Man 3 Goofy Gadgets and Dirty Harry can't say that was a good game Lone Ranger now I never played this one um, though I have seen pictures and reviews on it sort of reminded me of more of like the gun smoke type of game uh, I would probably recommend it it's another Konami uh, Konami game average rating of actually did pretty good between two three and a half to uh, two three point nines so it's not too bad Looks like there's a map. Uh, looks like there's a bit of top-down action, as well as side scroller. I'm not, I'm not sure if I have this one in my collection. It actually looks pretty good. I might take a look at this one. It looks to be really detailed. I like the. It shows you where you are on the map. Sections seem to be pretty big. Uh, oh.
Here's the uh, fold down section. Damn, pretty, looks like a pretty big map area too. Upgrade your guns, silver bullets, long barreled, short barreled guns. And then let's see what, ah. Tail spin. Very nice. That's a great picture actually. What do you expect? It's a Capcom game from Disney. I think you can count on it to be fairly decent. Here we move on to the Game Boy section. Uh, looks like this one we're going to be focusing on Gauntlet 2, Mysterium, which I don't have. I've actually never seen that. That looks pretty cool. Battle Unit Zeoth. I don't have that one. World Cup, got it. Gauntlet 2, got it. Chess Master, got it. And Spot, got it. Uh, but that Mysterium is really piquing my interest there. Speaking of Mysterium, Alchemy, the ancient science devoted to the forging of useful items from basic metals, forms the background of Mysterium from Asmic. Okay. Fighting monsters in a first person perspective maze is a fantasy role playing game element. The real challenge of Mysterium lies in mastering the puzzle, the puzzling alchem. Can't even pronounce that now. Alchemical transformations with over 150 weapons, herbs, and devices possible. I'm liking that. Again, very... Who made this? Asmic. That's got a very Shadowgate... The third time we've mentioned that. Very Shadowgate kind of feel to it. So like they've got a good map system here where you can find things. Was there a rating for that game at the start? No. Wow. This looks like it could be a good one. I'll have to add this one to the list. Here's your uh, notes on your experiments and what produces what when you mix whatever. Gauntlet 2. That artwork is... Have you ever seen worse artwork in your life? This freaking guy. The game looks good though. Like it's Gauntlet. What else do you want? But uh, damn it. I wouldn't buy it just based on that artwork alone. Synth voice. The synthesized voice tells you what type of animal you pick up. I guess if you play Gauntlet, you pretty much know what Gauntlet is about. Look at this garbage. Like, come on, guys. I know it's Game Boy. I always put the wizard. Battle Unit Zeoth. All right. We got a mech game here. An evil alien force has invaded Earth in the first phase of its sinister plan. Earth's leaders come up with a single plan to send in their latest scientific triumph, Battle Unit Zeoth. This unbelievably versatile flying super robot is the only glimmer of hope in thwarting the aliens' heinous plans. You must guide him towards the alien city, successfully penetrate its defenses, and find the evil alien leader who holds the Earth fate in his twisted claws. Hope you're ready. Standard. So it looks like it's a flying game based on, you know, these certain scenes. Size cooler. I don't know. It's a mech game, so I like it. Um, these World Cup soccer games, a lot of the sports games on the NASs tend to be good, especially just for nostalgia reason. It's got a very... Um, Oh shoot, slipping on my now. Character design of like uh, River City Ransom, as well as uh, the volleyball games for the NES. I like that graphic style. Spot, I could care less. Chess Master, I like chess. I think that would be a good portable game to have. You know. Game Boy Classified. So again, as uh, fans and players, you could create your agent code and send in your special cheats and finds. Um, 
Oh, Jalico made Zeos. Okay. Chess Masters, high tech. Gauntlet 2 is Mindscape. Yep. World Cup was made by Nintendo. Nubunga's Ambitions, Koei. So, you know, that's good. Coming soon, Fortified Zone. Game Boy Top 10. Mario Land, yep. Turtles, yep. Dr. Mario, who cares? Final Fantasy Legend, yes. Tetris, yes. Gargoyle's Quest, definitely. Castlevania, definitely. Batman, definitely. Play Action Football, I'd say yes. And Radar Mission, I don't remember what that is, so I recognize the name. Lolo 3, worth picking up for sure. Average rating of uh, 4 out of 5. That's really good. I have the Lolo games. I just, I don't play them. I don't know why. I haven't played them probably since they came out. I have a nice strategic walkthrough on it. Levels 8 to 13, 14 to 17. Very nice. Achievers. Let's see if anything here stands out. Airwolf, 4.6 4. million. Everybody just finished these ones. Those are all finished. Dr. Mario high score of 188,000. Maniac Mansion finished, finished. Narc, 2 million. Very good. Wizardry finished. Tetris, 855,000. Super Mario Land Game Boy maxes out at just under 1 million. Very cool. Another section of my favorites, top 30, and my boy Mario 3's in one for 15 months, so I knew I was probably happy when I saw that. I was happy about Turtles 2, Mega Man 3, even though I was never really a really Mega Man fan. I was probably pissed that Final Fantasy was in fourth, but at least it's better than Dr. Mario. Tetris, Standard, Crystallis, I liked. Dragon Warrior 2, I liked. Actually, I loved it. Big fan of the Ultima, Quest of the Avatar. Uh, mainly I played that on PC. Uh, Star Tropics is good. Mega Man 2, Mario 2, Zelda. Let's see if anything stands out here that looks really weird. Super C. Wow, this WrestleMania Challenge. It's kind of a crap game. Battle of Olympus, I would take it off. Shadowgate finishing out the bottom at 30. That must. At this point, I think Shadowgate's probably been out for a long time. Player's Picks, Mario 3, Pro's Picks, Crystallis, Mega Man 3, Dragon Warrior 3, Ultima, and then Dealer's Picks, you know, Mario 3 still a big seller. Celebrity Profile, Alex Winter from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and actually uh, the next Bill and Ted movie should be coming out. I think it was supposed to come out this year, but it's probably been pushed the next year now. Hudson, Sock, Hudson Hawk. So that piece of crap. Garbage. What was Bruce Willis thinking? Counselor's Corner. This is where people send in their questions, where they're stuck on certain games. What, how do I get through the Ghost Village, for example, in Star Tropics? More Star Tropics. You remember my couple previous reviews prior to this one? or Let's Reads, uh, focused on, I think the prior two issues had Star Tropics um, in part one and part two. Ultimate Quest of the Avatar, good game. Very, very reminiscent, if you haven't seen, like, of uh, Final Fantasy. But then it delves into, like, these dungeon scenes where it's, like, a first-person walkthrough. Castlevania 3. I don't know. Magician. Maybe I'll look into that. I don't know. I, I like it when it's got that sort of detailed, like really in depth werewolf. I, I knew I didn't like that game. Now playing. So these are games that are making their way to NES retailers. Magic Darts. Give me a break. It's just stupid. Wampum. I know the name. I don't can't say I played it. Mini putt. I guess if you're into golf, you might like that one. 
clash ball. NASCAR challenge, laser invasion. Oh, that's with the uh, uh, the laser sculpt helmet that you would put on. So that probably means it was definitely garbage. The Belonga's Ambition 3 is going to be good. Awesome. And games to look into the future that are coming out. Tecmo Super Bowl. Frig, that was a great game. If you're going to play a football game for the NES, it's definitely Tecmo Super Bowl. Dark Man saw that in the theater. That was with uh, Liam Neeson playing the main character. I don't know if the game's any good. Daydreaming Davy, I'm sure, is probably not very good. And Hudson Hawk is definitely not good. And here is Packwatch, hot scoop on the Protech US Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So this is where they're still giving you little teasers on it, stuff that's coming out for it, like Super R-Type. And then other games that will be coming out. Coming soon, probably in the next couple issues. And that is it. And then on the back, obviously more buttons and memorabilia you can buy from Nintendo. So that concludes it for this issue, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Volume 24 of Nintendo Power. Hope you guys like this little read-through, and don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment. Tell me uh, if there's any games on there I was wrong about, and maybe I will check them out as well. Until next time, we'll see you guys again real soon.